Welcome into episode six of Why Start a Podcast. Brayden Zaprenet, Matt Perez, Will Galvez on the road for some of us. I'm at San Diego State for the USD San Diego State baseball game coming up on a Tuesday night. It's a little crosstown rivalry as I'm watching batting practice right now as we record our podcast. Matt Perez live from his man cave up at his house. The great memorabilia behind you. See, this is the downside of doing the podcast at our great location that Todd Durkin opens up for us at his studio. But we miss out on Matt Perez sports memorabilia behind him. I mean, that, that looks like a, a pro setup there, Matt. Yeah, this is only half of it. Um, we're doing right. some uh, construction in La Casa de Perez right now. So the other half is just clothes. But uh, yeah, you, you got the Shaq jersey. Uh, you got some Yankee paintings over there, whatever this shoulder right here with uh, Derek Jeter and Mariano and you know, Dak and Tatis. And you got a whole, the whole, whole setup here with flags and autographs and pictures and towels and everything like that in the man cave. And I couldn't mention San Diego State without mentioning that I'm in the Will Galvez booth when he used to call games for uh, KCR <laughs> back in the day. Little college Will time. Galvez. That's right. Welcome yeah, to the they, podcast, um, Will. I thank you. Welcome back. I heard you had a pretty extensive traveling weekend along Interstate Five. Um, yes. Yeah, the glory days of calling games from the shittiest equipment that KCR would gave us. But <laughs> I'm assuming you're getting taken care of a lot better um, because yes. our mics would continuously cut out. But dude, how's the field look? It, it has to look beautiful right now. The field is gorgeous. I, me and the uh, the SID here of USD Anderson Hagler, where Hagler was here, and we walked in, we're like. There's no way the grass is that green. There's no, it has to be fake. We walked up to the grass and it was real. It's not a paint job. It's great. It looks fantastic. It's AI. It's a, it's an AI field. Yeah. They redid the banners out in right field, which is great. They were kind of beat up, but proudly displaying, displaying Steven Strasburg and Tony Gwynn and Travis Lee and the retired numbers here at uh, TG. And then uh, the brand new video board out here, Will, for the uh, Aztecs baseball program. So, and they patched up the uh, center field fence as well so anything that has tony's name on it needs to be in the highest pristine and san diego state's doing a good job of upgrading a lot of those facilities and you know so brock ungrich the head coach of usd played here for san diego state and played for tony big in friends with t Gwynn jr who all three of us are uh know very well in the uh, coach's office they got a picture of tony and tony Gwynn jr side by side so brock and i took a selfie with the, the picture of tony's and sent it to T. Gwynn Jr. And we're like, hey, man, I, I know you're in spring training right now, but I don't know why you're missing the USD San Diego State game on a Tuesday. You got a good kick, got a good kick out of it. <laughs> I think he has a valid excuse. I think so, spring too. Training. <laughs> spring training, we're doing Korea and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, Perez and I had a pretty fun weekend. I had a good time up in uh, Newport traveling up and down the five. I did. Perez got to have a little bit more R&R, though, and become the local of Newport Beach. Yeah, I... Uh... I can't show my face in mutt lynches for probably about two more <laughs> weeks, given how often I was there. I think I was there four times in a three day stretch. It's kind of, it was, it was, it was kind of like a college baseball weekend where you get that double header on a Saturday and play Friday, Sunday. You know, that was the scenery, Matt. Uh, at mutt lynches in particular. Stag. Um, it's like you're walking a hero, in, uh, like an Alabama, you know, recruitment camp. It's just five stars all over the place. I, well, are, are they are they like fifth year senior five stars? Because I heard there's a, an older demographic there um, that is always on the prowl. You know, Mutz Mutz is a real unique place, and Mike will tell you this. Um, it's a real spread out age age range there. Good, we like um, wide demographics. So <laughs> it's kind of like a. Uh, it's kind of like a really good uh, mid-major in a, you know college basketball. Like you know, you get some of the freshmen that pop up on the scene that are you know you never heard of before. But then you'll get like the guy that's been there for six years, and it's like you should be working at like an accounting firm. You know, like why are you still here? So we wanted to talk about the Padres pitching from last week. I, we might have to par that into uh, next week, and we'll see how this kind of develops with the. Spring training. Have any of you really played? Like, how many how many spring training games have you watched? Anybody like that dialed in this watching spring training games? Or are we at the point now where it's the 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 fun vibe of baseball being back is worn off? Yeah, I've seen two pitches. 
Yeah, and I haven't the, really paid it that much. Attention. Yeah, it's, just, it's hard, and it's like it's on when I'm working. I'm trying to go out to a game, um, at least in the next like two weeks. Um, you know, because it's right down the road. Yeah, but, you especially. Like, I feel you like no excuse. Yeah, you should be. No, you should be. You should be working remote. That all these ballparks. I, I know I should, but then I start drinking beers. It's like I get distracted. And like I just want to watch because like. I do enjoy it. Like when it's different in person, right? Because you, you have a better feel for everything. Um, you're not living through your screen. You can see in person like some of the developments. Um, definitely will get out there. But no, I mean, dude, I, I it's like it's gotten to the point now. It's like the first day is pretty amped up, and then it's just mundane until basically open day, opening day. Unless you guys are amped up, like I'm just being real. Like that's how um, I feel. I'm not amped yet. I'm not amped yet. We've talked about some things off air about, you know, some problems that the Padres might be facing, but um, it's hard to get excited. I, I just can't. It's just different with baseball, too. Like when I was a Chargers fan, you'd watch, you know, preseason, you could kind of evaluate how guys play in certain spots. You're like looking for special teams guys, right? Like everybody that's battling for a camp spot's battling for the, you know, the mate, the, the, the pro teams deal and you're not watching like young prospects but baseball is such an interesting sport it's hard to it's hard to like watch and evaluate in meaningless games especially with 75 percent of some of these lineups that will not even crack the big leagues this season it's all speculative and it's cool but i think this kind of goes back to what we said last week there's still a bunch of glaring holes that it's hilarious <laughs> seeing like the san diego media trying to like dazzle it up by saying oh this isn't a problem no it's a problem like there's there's some issues that i'm, I'm starting to get concerned about and they're not going to get fixed probably anytime soon so what we're seeing right now is a pretty good indication of what's going to get rolled out you know that first week of the season and beyond i just i can't get that excited i mean we were all at a six <laughs> temper last your week, right temper your excitement braden i just you could take i know you're excited right now God uh, <laughs> Matt, you still at a six right now for your excitement level for the baseball season? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of it, like it's kind of here when it's here. I uh, agree. I'm more focused on March Madness, to be honest with you. Yeah, yes. Cougs, right Cougs, Cougs are good right now. So Matt's yeah, yeah, entire considering... focus is on college basketball, which kind of is a perfect segue, Matt, because I wanted to get into, you know, this Aztec game tonight for. Will, big. how are we feeling tonight? It's a big game. I mean, at San Diego State has not played well on the road in conference play, and they're playing a team in UNLV that really needs to go on a. They, they need to win the tournament to make the the tournament. But they've they've been giving some teams some fits in the Mountain West Conference. Yeah, it's um. By the way, this is the uh, last week that we're on Mountain Time, so I don't have to do any more goddamn nine p.m. tip off. So next Sunday is the time change. So I'm excited <laughs> about that. Um, but to your point, yes. So, you know, we cracked, the, you know, stay in the top 25 based off the last, you know, few performances out there. I am a little nervous because we're supposed to be playing in the conference tournament at the same arena, you know, here in a couple weeks. And this is huge because you nailed it. I, I haven't seen a very good response on the road at home. Vias is popping off the, the students and all the crowds there. Um, I need to see, and I'll, you know, UNLV, not the strongest, you know, of the conference, but it's a formidable foe, right? And if they just go out and lay another egg, I'm, I'm growing concerns. Again, similar to the Padres that I'll have with the Aztecs. Like, if you got to get it done on the road. I don't care. Like, you don't have to go undefeated. You don't have to, like... To go 500 at least. Go above, right? Like, just a little bit? They should I don't be know. playing, it's like, 500 ball on the road and take care of business at home, and you're going to be in a really... Really good yes. spot. So, Will's Will's in a box already, and we don't tip off for another four hours, three and a half, three and a half hours. Yep, yep, three and a half hours. We got the Cougs this week, right? We got the Apple Cup. Is that tonight or is that tomorrow? The Cougs got one game. It's against uh, that purple team from the West Side, and that's Thursday night. Thursday that's night, it. we got that's that. How they, that. That's how they wrap up their final year of Pac-12 hoops. They should be able to take it. They they hammered those guys before, didn't they? They actually squeaked out an overtime win. Ah, it's their yeah. rare shootout overtime. Is that in win Seattle in or is that in Pullman? It was in Seattle. So this okay, game's so in Pullman. Um, just take care of business. Put the pressure on Arizona to win twice this week. 
So that's uh, one game behind Arizona. They're a half game. Oh, a half game. And Arizona's got two against UCLA. And Washington State's got one left. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. And you just need a tie, and because in a tie you win. Yep. For sweeping uh, the Wildcats. We swept the Wildcats. Yeah. It's better to win the regular season one than the tournament. I mean, at this point, for both San Diego State and Washington State, winning the tournament is just kind of like fun, but you want to win the conference outright. San Diego State's still in a battle there with only, what are they, a game back, Will? Yep. Yeah. Only that's a game why back. I, and Saturday's going to be big because Friday. The, Az- the Aztecs got Boise at home. And then New Mexico plays Utah State, so hoping for a New Mexico victory on Saturday. And if the Aztecs take care of business tonight, you know, and a New Mexico win on Saturday, the Aztecs get a share in the title. Another banner you can hang at VA House. That'd be clutch. It starts tonight, right? That's I, I don't want you know the zombie starting on the road that we've seen every lineup this year. I, I mean, outside of like conference play, I just I have or uh, you know. Non-conference like earlier in the year, yeah. Out of conference, sorry, I'm just getting rattled because guys already know. Guys, guys already lost. Win. It's a must-win. Like I obviously, like it goes without saying, but I need a response from this team. I need to see like the EKG meter. Like, like I need to see a heart <laughs> beat. That's all I want. because we have not seen that all season. Please, that's all I'm asking. Are you? Are you? You guys are talking to the guy of the team that is from the best conference that is quickly playing themselves out of an NCAA tournament bid with their last couple of weeks. I mean, the Frogs on Saturday, while I was calling the USD game, had a 17-point lead at the Marriott Center at BYU and managed to lose by 12 points in that game. I mean, we we had our first sightings of dis- disgruntled Frog fans when it comes to Jamie Dixon, who they were going to build a statue for about a year ago. TCU trying to get their third NCAA tournament bid in a row for the first time ever in school history. They got West Virginia tomorrow trap game in Morgantown. And then they finished the season with UCF showing up. Those should be two victories. And then hopefully a couple of wins in the big 12 tournament. And all three of our teams will be dancing in uh, March madness. You guys are already good. You guys are already locks and we'll see what the frogs can become a lock later this week. But that kind of transitions us again into our next topic. We like to rank and draft things. I think we're going to temper the the draft this week and uh, and continue that next week. But we do want to rank a top five. We do want to keep it topical in March Madness. And we got a pretty good one that uh, Matt Perez put in our group off air. So I'm going to let Matt fully explain it. But it does involve ranking some March Madness topics, if you will. So we're going to rank five separate moments that happened during the month of March as related to college basketball. So what I mean by this is we'll, we'll call it A, right? A is your conference championship week, right? So this is your Mountain West championship, your Big 12 championship, your Big East championship, so on and so forth, right? That entire week for whatever school, you know, you like. Because there are some that are even starting, that started yesterday. And B is the first two days of March Madness, right? That is your Thursday, Friday. And then C would be the second two days, which would be the Saturday, Sunday. So that'd be then, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. No, that so that would be Oh no, you're talking about the second, the second okay, the, never yeah, mind. Yeah, that would be the Saturday correct, Sunday correct, of correct. the round of thirty-two. D would be the Sweet Sixteen Elite Eight weekend, so that following weekend, and then F would be the final four and the national title weekend. Right. So those are the five. Gotcha. Um I'm gonna go five to one. I'll I'll uh, start this off because I know Will needs some time to prepare for this one. He always needs time no, to prepare. He always seems like he's so off, caught off guard with any type of ranking we do. No, I'm ready. Come on, you got to take on the fly, my guy. This is a good one. This is a good one, Matt. This is a really good one. I like this one. Thanks, Will. This is March. All right, so I'm going to start with D. Thanks, Ross. The five spot. Uh, the Sweet 16 Elite Eight weekend. It's kind of like the letdown weekend after like the buzz that is the first weekend of March Madness. It's like less you know, game. Yeah, it's just less. You, like, you go from having like two to four games on at any given time to like one by like the lead eight, like one or two. So in the five hole, the Sweet Sixteen, the lead eight weekend, and then in the four hole, I'm gonna go with the conference championship week, um, just because I feel like that's more like your focus on like your school or like your team, as compared to like the overall like bracket, right? 
Um, so that's in the four. And then in the three, I'm going to go with the final four national title weekend. What? Um, cause yeah, it's, it's great, you know, but like at the same time, it's like, you, you got those two games on Saturday and then you got the, you know, the final game on like Monday, um, which I mean, it's, it's not bad for three because the last two are some heavy hitters. Um, this, the second round of March madness is going to be in the second slot for me. Um, I like the round of 32. The round of 32 games are, are great because you get to see the team, you know, like the lower seeds had the big upset go in and try to prove it again. Um, that's one of the things that I like about it. Um, and you still have a lot of games that are on at any given time. And then the best, best part of March Madness is the first two days when there's four games on at any given time and you're trying to find true TV and you got your laptop and your TV. <laughs> And your phone and your iPad and your Apple Watch and every everything's just buzzing, you know. And you're tracking all your bets. You're tracking your, you know, your bracket. Um, you're yelling in your group chat. Everything like that. That's that's like the two best days of the sports calendar. Arguably, the first two days of March Madness. I'd agree with that. Uh, before we move on to the next one, I want to ask you a question: Is there such thing as t- how many brackets should you be allowed? If you're making the rule on how many brackets you can make, like. Not entries, but different brackets for those entries. What's your what's your rule of thumb? Are you one bracket only, or two max, or you can have as many as you want? I go two max. I go two max as well. Like I would do one, like just kind of like BSing. Like like if I were you, I would pick TCU, right? And just one bracket. Screw it. Just to have one, right? And then I would pick one. Yeah, I'm gonna pick one where I'm thinking like legit. Like all right, I'll go through every matchup. Like. Be like, all right, hey, this is who my national champion is going to be. You know, not just picking the school. I usually do like a gut one and then I do like a hedge bet one. And then usually one of them takes off and the other one is catastrophically bad. Your take on the brackets, Will? Uh, you guys took it, everything I wanted to say. Um, I think two is good. I think there's one where you're actually like trying and like trying to almost nail every pick, which is never going to happen. And that's why it's fun. And then two, leading up to like i would say like the moments after selection sunday where you know all the matchups and like you want to pick like five to eight maybe ten upsets because that happens every year so that's what the second one is for and then like you were saying one of them always works out except for the one bracket buster that we seem to see every Mm -hmm. year we we can never peg it so i think two is fine three just it gets too overwhelming like it's there's too many things and then you're betting as well and it's just too much. Like my brain's already scrambled enough as it is, so I think having the stress of a third one would be too much. So two's a sweet spot. Has to be. I think I think so too. I I totally agree with you. Will you ready to rank? Oh yeah, here we go. Number five, conference championship weekend. Um, you know we've all been fortunate, or at least me and Braden have. You know, not so much Matt with Washington State <laughs> having a team that you know an at-large team or someone that's going to get into the tournament. But you know, that's the beauty of the conference tournament is that you're rewarded if you win out. So for those teams that have lackluster seasons, if you catch fire at the right time, it's well worth it. But that's really hit or miss. My fourth Elite Eight Sweet Sixteen. I almost wanted to take Matt's. He had to make a, but a good point. It's slowed down. You're pretty kind of worn out, like to be honest. Like even though we're all excited, it's been so much basketball to this point. And unless your team is actually in those, you know, parts of the bracket, you're like, ah, okay. There tends to be more blowouts. This is where like the upper echelon teams really exceed. I think that would be number four for me. Number three, it's the second of the, it's the second day of all of the games, right? So. You're still like on your second win. It's like going to like a bachelor party or whatever. It's like the second day. You still have energy, but you're still pretty wiped out from the first day. So I would take that one. So the second of the two days. Um, number two, final four. Like after my team, after seeing your team get to the final four, it just hits different. And obviously, we had one of the most special shots of all time with Lamont Butler advancing us to the national championship. I always thought too, and I think I'm going to go this year because it's in Phoenix. Attending the Final Four is way more fun than the national title game itself. It's just it's the best teams that are there. They pulled it off. And then number one, it's obviously the first two days. There is nothing better. I, I'm talking not sex, not Christmas, not like crack of a beer at a grill. Those first that first day 
when there is literally like 16 games on at once and you have multiple screens and you're flipping back and forth and you're texting your friends in the group chats and your bracket, every bets. Oh, I'm getting, I think I just climaxed right now. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is by far the best, the best weekend in my opinion too. And I'm going to try to write this down so I don't forget it as I, uh, as I go through. Um, you uh the final four you could combine the final four and the championship right the yeah yeah it's the same block. weekend right okay mm -hmm. so same weekend um all right my number five oh, it's I know my top I know my top three um I'm gonna be honest I my number five is probably the final four I by the time. That kind of rolls around. The luster of March Madness kind of wears off for me. I thought last year was a little bit different just because one of the teams I root for was in the Final Four, but that's usually the part where I'm I'm kind of like, I, I'd say I forget, but I kind of tune out the, the weekend. I mean, for me, the bracket and watching multiple games at one time and start to finish morning to night, is what really is is what which March what March Madness is. So Final Four to me is the last on the list. Then after the Final Four, I'm probably going to go with. Um, oh, I and it's kind of feel like I'm working backwards here, but I'm going to go to uh, Sweet Sixteen Elite Eight weekend is number four. Um, I think there's something to be said about punching your ticket to the Final Four and winning a regional. I mean, at the end of the day, you get a national championship looking trophy for winning your region and going into the final four. So I, I think there's something to be to that. And I think a lot of teams go full go just to make the final four over, you know, potentially making the national championship. Uh, so that's my number four, number three, I'm going to go conference championships. I think conference championships are great. Um, I, I really like the conference tournaments. Now, maybe that is a little bit biased with the sense that the last couple of years, the big 12 has been just insane to watch in the big, uh, in the tournament. I'm looking forward to that. But I, I remember so many times where watching San Diego state play in the mountain West tournament was always fun. And, and even times where they had the back against their wall, the, their back against the wall and having to play at Thomas and Mac, and they got to sneak one out here and, and make it through this to be able to make the NCAA tournament. Um, and it kind of says you have those super underdogs that, are playing for a chance to make the dance. Otherwise, you know, or, or, or they would never do it. It's that first teaser. So I really like the conference championship uh, tournaments. After that, I think the second round is uh, is great. The uh, the weekend to get into the Sweet 16. Um, you know, that su Saturday, Sunday, where your teams are getting to that next level is always a great matchup. And then the first number one is still, for me, always the first weekend is, yes. is, is the best. There's nothing better than that in sports. In sports in general, there's nothing better yes. than that Thursday, Friday tip off at what time do they start? Like nine in the morning on the West Coast? Seriously, 10? like nine oh three. It's like nine or ten in the morning, and you are got you got college basketball all day, and that's where all the mayhem happens. Mm -hmm. So number five for me is the final four. Number four is the sweet sixteen elite eight weekend number three conference tournaments just because it's not officially the real the big dance um and it's a little teaser number two is the second round to get into the sweet sixteen and number one is the opening weekend those are all good it's it's uh, like you, you always forget, up, huh? I'm so excited aren't aren't you fired up oh dude I, I'm ready to run through it I'm sweating my my, my hair on my arms are sticking up no, it, it brand nailed it. Like it's one of the best moments in sports. Like you have to have a pulse or you just don't like them um, at all to not appreciate how awesome, how special, how entertaining, how electric. And it just, it's so funny, especially those first two days because an enormous, like for instance, last year with Purdue losing the, you know, fairly Dickinson, it just shows the CBS scorebook or not CBS, like the TN, TBS, True TV, and it just rolls right into the next game. You have no time to react, and you just you're already tipped off. And it's it's so fun. It's so fun, and just collaborating with your friends and family, like it really here's, brings together a lot of people. And it's, it's a, a blast. There's a couple of things that I want to uh, point out about why March Madness is the greatest thing in all of sports. 
you know, one, one of course, is as Will said, it brings people together. I mean, anybody can fill out a bracket and have it pay off for them with zero knowledge of, of college basketball because that's how much of a crapshoot it is. And the fact that nobody's ever picked a perfect bracket just goes to show me how, diff, uh, how insane the tournament is, aside from like the math portion of that where it's just almost mathematically impossible. But that's one component. The other one to me, and I think this is the most significant one, and what's the difference between why college basketball to me in general is way better than the NBA, especially for this tournament is the majority of the players playing in this tournament will never play basketball again after they're eliminated. They will never play basketball again. And that's, it's, it's, it's a harsh reality, but it's, it's true. It's not like any other sport. Because, you know, basketball rosters are so small. There's so many college basketball teams. The chances of making the NBA, even for the best players in this tournament, are just so slim. These guys are playing to, to, to continue to play their sport that they've played since they were five years old, that have, they, they dedicated their life to. They're 20 minutes away from never playing that sport ever again in a organized fashion. On top of maybe some of those guys that are blessed enough to go to the professional route, this is the last time they're going to play with that team. I mean, you can't say that about other sports. I mean, with with the NBA in particular, and you start going through like obviously professional, but even in like other college sports, it's a single elimination tournament. You got twenty minutes if to 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 try to outdo the other team, and whoever loses will never play basketball again. That that's what makes it so much like so much drama in that tournament. March, yeah, yeah no like March series, Madness. It's, it's, it's one and done, baby. That's, that's it. You, you have that X amount of time to do it. And that's why the upsets are so hilarious when it happens. Like it's rare, but anything is possible. I mean, think about the legends that have come from March Madness that never hit the NBA level. Right. They're or just never had like a year or two years of service time. Right. Like you look at Jim or Fredette. Right. I mean, the guy's hooping in China or wherever he's at right now. But like, people know him because of his March Madness run. Or you think of Chris Jenkins with the game winning shot for Nova against UNC. A guy had like a tryout with like, you know, team like the NBA, but never had like an NBA career. But he's a household name because of March. It's, it's, it's just so fascinating how it's like, yes, like it is college athletics, but most of the time the guys that are great in the college football level are great in the NFL or they have an NFL career to some extent. And you can't say the same for college basketball. No, it's such a unique, it's such a unique sport and unique thing. And the other thing too is everybody's got a chance because of the conference tournaments. I mean, reality is everybody in college, aside from the conferences that limit you know, who makes their tournament in particular. And there are a couple, but most of them have everybody in it. You could go like, you win like eight games and you, th- you still, when you roll into your conference tournament, you're have a chance to win a national championship. I mean, everybody's got a chance to win a national championship. I mean, it's insane. Like nobody's ever going to do that, but you'll watch in these conference tournaments when they got the bid stealers out there, they got a chance to hoist the trophy at the end of the month. If they, you know, win eight games in a row, or something, in, it's probably more than that. It's probably like 12, with including the uh, conference tournament. But everybody's got a chance. Everybody's playing for the same thing. Not only is it a championship, but you're also playing to play your sport and continue to play your sport because after that, it's over, and it's never going to happen again. And that's it's a, a very emotional thing uh, for a lot of, for all the players out there, and it's, it's what makes it nonstop entertainment. That's a good rank, Matt. I, I like that. It was good stuff. Yeah, it really like tugs at you, and that San Diego State. Have you not thought year, about it? Have you not thought about it from that perspective? Like these kids, they'll never play basketball think, ever again. I think, I think that was yeah. No, it's um, and it's weird too because you know we're pretty much past the pandemic. You know all of the uh, you know remnants of it because there was players that had that extra year, right? So now we're right. as you get further and further away. They they're gonna get back to the point where they can only you know have four chances essentially um, if they're on scholarship and yeah it's a it's cutthroat and, you know it's symbolic of the tournament itself and it's just it's so much fun like I can't we can't rave enough about it and it just it, it seems to sneak up on us I don't know like because there's so much going on 
not only in sports, but like in the world. And it's like, before you know, it's like, oh my God, Selection Sunday's here. And then you start getting amped up. And then you look at rankings and you start looking at matchups and you look at history and you start to get in the highlights. And it's a good time. Like I, this is a really, really fun time of the year. How many, uh, how many tournaments have you attended? Have you been able to go to an NCAA tournament? Um, on camp, no, only like one because they would have, you know, the sectionals, regional, whatever it's called. Like they would have the first rounds, right? At San Diego State. Yeah. I've covered a couple. I remember seeing Auburn play and it's cool. it's It's electric, right? Like it's, there's a, there's like a feeling in the air, you know, I don't know how many you've been to, but there's like urgency, right? Like there's, there's something there's like, no, you can feel it for sure. There's tension, right? Exactly. You can, uh, you could, you could feel, you could feel the tension for sure in the turn. You know, it's a big deal. You know, it's going to be a, a huge thing. I've covered the tournament twice now at San Diego state, um, uh, for other radio stations. Uh, usually when I cover the NCAA tournaments, not for, uh, 97.3, I get contracted out by other schools, radio stations that can't afford to send anybody else out. Mm-hmm. So I've worked for, <laughs> I covered it for Clemson and College of Charleston, who were both at San Diego State at the same time, um, which was kind of cool. It was kind of a unique experience. Uh, and then last, the last one they hosted, TCU was actually in it, which was super cool. Um, so I got to, I got to see TCU play Arizona in that uh, from a media perspective. But I've been to as a fan as well. I went to the other Arizona game at Viejas. My freshman year at U of A, they played at Viejas Arena when they had a low, a loaded. That was like Aaron Gordon. Yeah, they had Aaron Kip, Gordon Kip and Caleb right. Tarzuski and TJ McConnell and Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Or it's Jake. Um, Nick Johnson. Um, they had um, Gabe York off the bench. I mean, they had their Brandon Ashley was on that team. I mean, that team was loaded and they lost in the elite eight, but they, they hammered Weber state that day. And I think, God, what was the other game that was, I forget the other game that was before them. I also went and watched errors. I watched San Diego state play in the first regional that they've had or first, first round. They've had a long time when Kawhi Leonard was on the team out at in mm-hmm. Tucson. I went out for that where they beat Northern Colorado. And then I stayed for the, the temple Penn state game. And, and then, Got to watch San Diego State punch their ticket to the Sweet 16, their first and for I think a first ever. Yeah. And then um, I went to Arizona, Ohio State, Sweet 16 in Los Angeles. You've been uh, to a few. I've been that's, a lot. I mean, so yeah, that's you know, actually my mom, awesome. My mom went, how many you've been to? She grew up like, she, I mean, she grew up. She went to U of A, right? My dad went to San Diego State. So it's very much like college basketball. Mm. And college basketball was like on TV cause I was born in like the first round of the tournament. And I think yeah. at the time, like the year, like 95, it was like kind of later in the tournament and everything, you know, everything's changed, but yeah. you know, my mom was pregnant with me in the hospital. They had, you know, the little TV they had in the corner was on March madness. It's the first time my dad like started watching as my mom was all about it. Cause you went to U of a, right. I mean, it's yeah. all about college basketball. And so it's always been like a big thing in my, in my family. And, and anytime the cats are San Diego States in a place close, we try to go and, we went as a family to the one for the Aztec or at Viejas was TCU versus Arizona. So my school versus my mom's school and the school I used to attend. So it's pretty cool. I mean, with work and stuff and uh, calling games for USD, it's, uh, it's going to be tough to, I, you know, cause you know, Perez who he's, he got banged from the, the show his, his Wi-Fi had enough. He's going to the gym, but you know, for him, <laughs> You know, Washington State, TCU, Irvine, San Diego State. Like, there's a lot of potential matchups in Salt Lake or Spokane that they're like, oh, let's go. And I'm like, I, just don't, I don't have the the resources, the time to be able to pull that off. But I will say this. If TCU is in the West region and they end up making it a Sweet 16 in L.A., I'll drive up and watch them play. So I'm in this, I'm in this boat where, you know, Last year, the Super Bowl was held here, and I probably wouldn't right. have paid that, even if the Chargers were in it. It's just it's a it's hard too much. swing. The Final Four is here, and it's one of those experiences, especially last year, and I'm not saying that San Diego State can't get back or can't get. It's just a, it's a crapshoot right now because of the team they have. But It was last I, year, I, too. It's, just, it's so hard. You never know what you're going to get. Exactly, right? So it's like you have to temper expectations, but like I would – 
I think I'm going to go. Like, I, I will spend the you have you to know, go. several hundred to have that experience of going to the Final Four. And there's obviously a perk package to it. But to your extent, like, you know, because I've, I've covered tournaments for work, too. And it's, you have to, like, observe it through a different eye, obviously. But, like, yeah, as a fan, it's – Man, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. It's like you can get, you can let loose. It's different from like other events that you go to. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the atmosphere of it being college athletes. It, you know, going back to your roots of being in school. There's just something about it that. Oh my god. So hopefully that'll be uh you know an option of mine, and I can lock down this ticket to go. Well, fun. the N- the NCAA is like. They're so far behind on a lot of different things, right? There's just yeah. they're, they're so incompetent on so many different things. But the one thing that they got dialed in from all so, I mean, everything about that tournament is to a T dialed in. Yeah. You know, as a media member, it's not a circus. I mean, it is like they're starting on time everywhere in the country and it's cool seeing pop scores pop up and it's, it's just like best. this huge major event and everybody in the country's got like some type of representation in it and it's just that's what I love about college athletics too. It just in general is it's the, like one of the only things that really represents people's cities and like the, the affiliation you have with some of these teams, right. Yeah. And these, in these places are just, you know, it's, 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 it's like European soccer, right. Where it's like, this is our town. Like just is showing that our town's better than your town might be mm-hmm. just in the sport, you know, but that's what makes it so much fun. And it's, it's intense. I, I love everything about, the NCAA tournament and March Madness. I had something else I wanted to talk to you about with that, but oh, Final Four. My dad went last year because he's an Aztec alum, right? So he, oh, I told him, you. I was like, you, you got to go. go. Yeah. Him and his, like, I think two of his buddies were mm-hmm. like, let's go. Like, we got to pull it. Like, they did the travel package with San Diego State. I'm like, you have to go, Dad. Like, he was on the fence. And my mom and I were like, go. Like, why yeah. am I not be able to get tickets? For-? I'm like, go. I find a way. School. They're never, they're never, ever, ever going to be back there. I mean, that's like literally the mindset you have to have when yeah. buying those tickets. There's still, a ch- I mean, obviously they could still get there. Um, you know, it's not like they're uh, a one and done program. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you're, my dad just celebrated his, what am I, 28? So that means he's 50, he just turned 57. Mm-hmm. I mean, at that, at that age too, it's like, I mean, you don't know anymore, like how many more times you're going to be able to have a chance to see it. You can't pass those opportunities up, especially if it's your school. And I, um, I'm in the same spot too. Like with the national championship last year for football, I was like, I'm going, I don't really care what the outcome is. Like I got to go. You got if if yeah. PCU makes, I see, I've kicked myself because they've made it to Omaha so many times when I was in college, they made it to Omaha every year I was in college that it mm. just seemed like it was a tradition. Like it was just always going to happen, but I got to get out there for one of them. And there's no guarantee they're going to get back. Even though this year they, they're really good. But if they go this year, I might have to pull the trigger and go and watch them play in Omaha. But if TCU ever makes the Final Four for college basketball, I'm going. I mean, there's no questions about it. Yeah, and that was the thing last year. You know, it was in Houston, and I had plenty of friends that went. And, I mean, I went and watched it with some buddies, which was good. So they kind of, like, took it away. But I, I, you never know. That's that's what's crazy, too. I mean, we could blink, and I could be 63 years old, and they still haven't been back. You know, like, I don't want right. that to happen, but I have to live with, like, that reality that – there's a chance, um, but it's crazy, man. Like I'm, I'm still kind of in, on cloud nine with that run that we went on last year. I, I think because it was so unforeseen. Like there was a, and it's like, you know, go check the receipts. Like you know, me and my buddies in our group, like we would, we had like rumblings early on. Like dude, we can like go on a run. Like we had, we knew we had a team. Oh yeah, they had for sure. Things. And it was just like the fact that it came into fruition. And it was like after we beat Alabama, I was like, "That dude, we're going." I was like, "That that was the biggest hurdle, and we're gonna do it." So, and it's hopefully some other team goes through that. Like as a fan, as an alum, like it it is. Dude, I mean, your school went, you know, for football, the championship, like it's unreal. It's just your team just feels like I feel like everyone I root for never wins. So it's That's like too, same. I'm in the same boat as you. And last right? like, year, like, last yeah. year was nuts because it was that year. If you look at that calendar year. You know, TCU had an unbelievable football season. I, I still don't think they were the best. I mean, 2014's team would wipe the floor with that TCU team. Um, but they just kept winning. And, like, they made the playoff. And I couldn't – like after like, just looking back to 2014 when I was in college and they got left out, I was like, there's no way we ever make the playoff. Mm-hmm. And they made the playoff, and I was almost in tears. And then they beat – the, oh, the yeah. game against Michigan was just insane. 
And like, I still like watch the highlights of that game because it just gets me fired up. But there's like, there's that emotional sense. It's like my school's there. That's my, like, that's us. We're yeah. there right now. Like super frogs on the field. That's our purple and white. Like that, that is our little school of 9,000 kids competing with Michigan on the biggest stage in college football. And that was such a whirlwind. And that came right off. That came off of the Padres being in the NLCS. And it was just like, yeah. Oh my God, this is great. Mm -hmm. And then it led into San Diego state basketball and the Aztecs went on this insane run. And I'm like, this is, I can't believe, I think I said probably 15 times during the national championship, San Diego state is playing in the national championship I, in basketball. Dude, that, that's literally, I, the final four. I was saying the same thing in the final four. Yeah, I was like, they are playing. Even though they're playing Florida Golf, or they're playing Florida Atlantic, Florida Atlantic, FAU. I was like, they are in the Final Four. People are watching the Final Four, and the logo on their bug is the San Diego State logo they've been watching for years. Watching this team grind out a win against Portland back in the early two thousands. Like this is <laughs> San Diego is at the Long San Diego State. State's in the Final Four. They hit the shot. They're going to the net. I'm like, they're in the national championship. When, and that was just a year ago. I not even a year ago. It's I mean it was like coming up on it, but like yeah, it's oh my god, it's remarkable. Yeah, I mean I, I blacked out like when when Butler hit that shot. I I I, I, dude, I was crying. I was calling my dad. I was like yeah, jumping on everyone. That, like, that was me in the in the Michigan game. Oh I immediately god. Facetimed all my friends like from college. I was like, we're going to the national championship game. We we I, did we just do that? Did we just did we just do that? No, so. that, that's a good point. Like the whole, wow, my, you're like, my team's in the final four. San Diego State's in the final four. Like we're in, I, I had the same feeling. Cause I was like, this doesn't feel real. And like, I, I think, and it, you know, obviously it's fucking sucked that we lost and got our asses beat. Um, See, I, that's the downside of like everything I just told you. The Padres lost the NLCS. TCU got blown out yeah, in the national championship. Yeah. And San Diego State relatively for basketball terms got blown out in the national championship. You know, so it's like, I, our teams still don't win, Will. They just they just know. they just go far. They win all the other games, but they've never won uh, championships. I didn't want to get this thing wrapped up because I got to get going here with San Diego State USD baseball, and uh, we'll we'll continue the conversation. But it was a fun year last year, and I hopefully you know there there's some sick people, unfortunately, the lucky people that like are used to seeing their teams do this all the time, and I don't understand how those people. I, I life must be great. It just must be great when you're all your teams. Win. Like being from Boston is probably one of the sickest things ever. Yeah. Like those, those annoying kids you saw and the memes at the, the parade. Year like, oh, I'm like 13 years old. I've seen 11 or 12 championship parades between the 14 years, you know, right. or UCLA basketball fans. Like you just think of these dynasty, like dynastic teams from every level. And you're like, screw them. They, they don't deserve it. hundred percent. All right, Will, they'll do it for us. Matt Perez, whose internet knocked him out of the stream, said, wanted to end the show with, this is March. So for Will Galvez, Matt Perez, I'm Braden Zaprenit. Telling you guys, this is March. We'll see you guys next week. Let's go.